So before we talk about our webinar, I'd like to give a short introduction about our company. There's some changes. Last year, our parent company, Texas Group, has set up Screening Eagle Technologies, and project has been integrated. Our new mission is to protect the built world. Our Asia General Manager, Mr. Peter Lim, delivered a clear message in this video. Our focus is more on the protect the built world. This is our, the logo for our company. Now our holding company, we are using this logo, it's really eager head, and basically with technology and data. And uh, normally we break up into sensors, software, and data. Aim is to actually reduce the entry barrier for advanced concrete inspection. How do we do that? Making technology easy to use. Secondly, data easy to interpret. And also we want to make technology affordable. And to achieve this, we have software innovations. Example, AI detection, machine learning, we use this state-of-art technology. We recognize that we'll tag them automatically. Uh, we use iOS device uh, we for collaboration, sharing. So these are the ways that we can make technology easy to use. In the past, it used to be, okay, you need to be expert consultant to use this instrument. Now, maybe when to lower the part, even the, the operator can use the instrument. And this is not enough. To, in order to achieve this, we must make this technology affordable. So today we will share some example. So last week, David had explained the principle of the two most popular thermography methods applied to concrete inspection. Both applied eight codes based on the time of flat measurement. They are UPE and GPR. They transmit and reflect the impulse at the ultrasound wave or electronic magnetic wave. Both sending energy into material, then reflect. Once this uh, interface provides the contrast, for example, concrete to steel, there is a total reflection for GPR, or concrete to steel, partial reflection for the ultrasound pulse echo method. So this is based on the material difference. And material difference, GPR is based on the dielectric constant. A me mechanical wave like a pulse echo is based on the material acoustic impedance. GPR is good for object location, especially metallic object. And ultrasound is good for defect location. We also introduced this uh, advanced model of uh, PDA solution, which is a multiple channel solution array system. It provides you the real-time image in 2D, 3D on-site interpretation. The ecosystem with wireless connect to iOS app and has your testing efficiency, right? Later, we can see how we can do that. Uh, it also built the uh, communication no time uh, everywhere. Lastly, we can look at the solution of the uh, Bundy family. They are always agreeable from different needs. We can choose the right one from project offer. So now we can look at the overview of today's topic. There's an uh, application notes. So I will cover the first one. I take out some example. Uh, for example, some reverse scan in the past. So this is the first one uh, I'd like to share. We conduct this uh, demo session and use this column. We find the uh, two vertical rebar in the concrete. So I'd like to take out my iPad screen, right? So this scan was uh, do a strap scan uh, vertically to in this column. Uh, I think last webinar we already saw the function. So you can easily strap on the screen and look at the individual data. At least two readout actually is uh, uh, the location of the rebar. And we also want to emphasize uh, the latest new function of the high definition focus, which really help on this kind of rebar detection. Uh, last year, we also conduct some measurement in Singapore. Uh, this uh, so called I beam or H beam is uh, commonly used for this kind of universal col col column de design. Usually used for high risk building or seismic design. For new construction after formwork removed, we can do this kind of testing directly to ensure the quality. So you can see this uh, details about this uh, column before the thing. You can see the H beam is inside in the center and surrounding with a vertical rebar. From the test result, you can easily see this uh, rebar layout at around 7 to 8 cm in this cover. Over here, you can see some reflection at center, actually less reflection from the H shape. And important, we have a deeper penetration at the 90 cm. 
also can take out this uh, test result over here. After last week webinar, some people connecting with me how to do rebar detection with this uh, pulse echo method. I only can say it's possible, right? For example, I can easily see this uh, rebar layout a certain cover and keep a constant spacing. I would like to say this will be the rebar reflection. Then come to this uh, light reflection, then we have to look at what's the material property. And basically we have this uh, A scan at the left hand side, right? And these are typical reflection from the pulse echo. You can look at the cursor over here, right? And you can see a positive, negative, positive, this kind of reflection. And come to this reflection, and you can see it's a totally different, right? It's a phase inversion happens, right? So basically, this kind of reflection is referred to metallic object. That's why I'm confident to say there's a metal reflection at the tip of the uh, H beam. So this uh, another example. Uh, later on, we also testing on the retaining wall. So come to here, you can have a closer look. So basically, there's some uh, overlapping bar happens, right? So in some special case, two rebar overlap with our latest high definition mode, we can see very, very clear. So it, this kind of image are even better than a GPR scan or other uh, rebar detection method. So next example is, is a main purpose to have this uh, uh, ultrasound pulse echo method is looking for defect or, or looking for a total uh, depth measurement or slab thickness. So we take out some example from a previous work. I think some of Indian customers who are familiar with this concrete block, we get this example from Indian market. So over here, we can look at the details with a GPR scan. Basically, we can have a clear rebound reflection on top of the on top of the right hand side, right? There's a seven rebar all can be seen clearly. A surface honeycomb can find at the left hand side, but the small wavelet cannot give uh, evidence to say over here is a honeycomb. But we can see a big void at the center, right? So this a uh, radar diagram. But come to ultrasound, all the defect can be seen properly, right? First left hand side is a honeycomb. And we can see the big void Accelerator and deeper has another one. And even below rebar layout, there is some uh, small void over here. So uh, uh, important, we can look at the total thickness about this concrete block is about 800 millimeter. So this uh, comparison from the two meter and just right up for uh, previous knowledge. Personally, we also involve some uh, other projects. For example, we test this in Indonesia. Uh, this water tunnel inside has a metal tube, metal conduit. So the diameter, I think, easily five to six meter. Uh, and it was built very early uh, since World War II. It was built by Japanese and still in service. But in the past, owner find anything happen on the surface, they just keep patching the concrete cover. So for example, you can see a lot of cracking on the surface, right? So we conduct a ultrasound pulse echo method. So in this case, we actually testing from the below until the top. So this is a long scale measurement. And below we can see a bigger concrete cover at 60 cm and go to top is something like a 20 to 30 cm. So first you can have a, a different depth measurement. And secondly, uh, last week we also explained, once you find the, the total depth loss, we call back all these continuities, that's because early reflection caused by all these defect, right? That's because a 100% reflection. So we can see uh, three major defect along this measurement line, right? I circle in yellow color. We also combine the GPR method. A GPR method is not sensitive to the air defect, right? It's not saying not possible. Like an early uh, is, uh, example, we can see a big defects. So this one, I, I highlight over here, this actually is a bigger defect referred to this location, right? But the other two is not sensitive in the GPR radar diagram. But the good thing, ultrasound not sensitive to re, uh, rebars. But we can see rebar very clear at the 40 cm, 
right? So it's not a common to have this kind of bigger cover, right? At least a to, uh, total thickness reflection from the radar diagram. So this is uh, a uh, mag review from radar. Uh, this method also commonly used for quality assessment, especially for precast element. So, for example, this uh, structural element center has uh, this uh, form to reduce the total structural weight. But this construction has a precast on the below, and later has a second cast, right? You can see this uh, vertical rebar. So, during second cast, uh, there always has a cold joint, right? If we can test from below, we can easily find the this kind of interface either has a cold joint or not. So this is the test result. So along the center of the element, we do a long scale measurement. Basically, we can identify there's an interface debonding. We also do a cross line scan, so we can identify good area and bad area, right? So you can see this image. We flip over, and you can find how is a good area and a bad area image. Uh, this also Singapore project. Uh, I think uh, this brand name is uh, also quite popular in Singapore. Uh, Zublin uh, supply a lot this kind of tunnel concrete element to our tunnel in uh, construction. Right, this uh, some picture taken from the uh, precast uh, uh, plan in Malaysia. Uh, we had done a lot of tests over here. I want to highlight. We are waiting for the shear wave was uh, really integrated to the latest EN standard one two. 504-4. So from there, I think this uh, test method can be widely used. Uh, for this uh, special case, actually client is uh, looking for shear wave velocity. and uh, use a shear wave velocity to build the uh, conversion curve to concrete uh, strength, use the uh, QA measurement. The advantage over here, we use a pulse echo method, is uh, testing from single side, especially for for this uh, ready construct tunnel element, we are not able to test from the other side, right? The single side measurement. Secondly, don't need any coupling, right? Uh, lastly, it gives you a real time image. And based on the image, as we see, we can easily identify the total thickness. As long as we know the traveling time, the native of this measurement is the traveling time. Because the thickness of the concrete element is basically for precast element, we uh, factory control is very tight. We can easily uh, use the uh, specification from a 240 divide the traveling time. We can identify the testing location, shear wave velocity. And based on this uh, shear wave velocity, we can easily uh, correlate to density, correlate to compression strength for a QA control. So this project is still ongoing in Indonesia. This is a highway project from uh, Jakarta to Bandung. Uh, we test a lot on this uh, long beam. Also, uh, a combined method is always a favorite. So you can see this uh, technical manager to test on this uh, precast element with this uh, GTR method. Right? <laughs> Once you conduct the scan, you can have this kind of image on site uh, easily. So it gives you a very clear message how is your structural detail, uh, where is the rebar location, what's the cover, how is the total depth, right? We also conduct uh, some uh, ultrasound pulse echo method, especially for this uh, long scale measurement. We, we test on this long beam. So one measurement can easily cover, uh, actually you can, you can cover more than 10 meters. I take out all the measurements, something like this. Uh, importance over here, the total thickness we are looking at for this case, you don't need to manually to tag by yourself. It's all done by software. We call AI backward tagging. This uh, number four application notes on this kind of special concrete mixture. Uh, it mixed with uh, steel fiber, we call SFRC. So this is a GPR test result on top actually mixed with uh, steel fiber and below is no steel fiber and you can see radar diagram cannot, cannot look at this kind of steel fiber reinforced. And Pulse Echo provide you the only solution to test on the quality on steel fiber. Uh, in Singapore, we have this uh, special high density concrete mixture design. 
So half of the volumetric mix with uh, this uh, metal powder. The purpose to mix this uh, metal powder to block the radiation and this structure applied to Singapore Cancer Center. We test with silver smith hammer as well. This give a uh, very close the MPA result when we uh, do the conversion based on the 10% lower curve. Uh, we can see from the screen is uh, how the concrete design, uh, how it's a mixture looks like and some uh, surface corrosion from the metal powder. Uh, this is uh, an early version of the Bundy 250RE. We can have a very good Bundy tracer at the 900mm and center reflection reflect, uh, refer to the uh, this uh, rebar, right? So there's probably some uh, other defects. Uh, this image even clearer, right? You can see on top this uh, rebar, and we do a parallelama B scan. We can even find uh, a pipe location, a small pipe. A diameter is uh, 20 mm. So we can see two rebar and a pipe. So this image much more clear. Next one. Uh, there's also some concern on the grouting defects or debonding, this kind of two layer debonding. I take out some example, uh, try to share. Last year, we do some uh, visit to Philippine market. So we test this uh, Manila Metro project, uh, uh, was handled by one of the biggest local construction company. There are also some other testing of there. For example, structure detail, we use a GPR. Institute of uh, compression strength estimation, we use a silver smith hammer. They are using this uh, silver smith uh, PCM model. Quality control, like a cold joint, uh, we use a Bundy PL200 UPV method. Uh, so here I want to just highlight the details about PDA 1000, right? So this structure is a kind of box girder. Uh, it's commonly seen from a major project like a highway or metro lines. Uh, you can see this uh, plan, how they cast this uh, girder post density uh, concrete element. You can see the PT dot, right? It's running like a curvature below. Uh, from the bottom, it extends to the uh, two sides, right? And after they tie up the rebar, a vertical rebar mainly for better shear reinforce, right? Uh, shear force. And they use a foam work, they will pour the concrete with for harden. Uh, and from this image, uh, you can see this could be the almost ready product. Uh, after applying the tensioning, they seal the cap, right? So uh, over here, we want to highlight the grouting defect after sealing the cap. So we do a two test. So we test on the uh, no grouting area. So for example, you, you can imagine this a box inside, right? So it's not a whole solid object. So we can see uh, over here, we, can, we, we couldn't get a total reflection from back wall because this project, this object easily 30 meters, right? I can't remember, I think 26 to 28 meters. But we can see a clear reflection at 20 cm. So all this stacking is automatically. And good thing we know the thickness, we can use a back wall easily to calibrate the velocity of this uh, concrete element uh, and surface rebar over here. Uh, next, we test on the location, uh, crossover on this uh, two grouter area, right? The cap was a grouter. At least a uh, uh, image from the B scan by Bundy PDA 1000 which I didn't see any reflection clearly, right? So I, 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 I quite confident to say this, uh, this tool was uh, uh, growth properly. And I also attached uh, this uh, GPR radar diagram, right? So easily you can see the reflection from the metal cap, right? So in this method, GPR may not suitable to, to give you an indication whether the growth is properly or not. Uh, next example is uh, actually based on the uh, structure we looking at the uh, PPVC two unit. How is the uh, how is the bonding quality? So PPVC is not something new to us uh, because Singapore we apply PPVC uh, for some years. So PPVC stands for prefabric prefinish volumetric construction. It's kind of offline construction method. 
uh, is uh, early involved by U.S. market since 1980s. Singapore government actually had active uh, using this uh, new production method, right? Yeah. Singapore is the first project was done by our sister company called PBR Construction. Right? You can see how this uh, final product from factory shift to one side and later just stack up together like a Lego house. So you, in this process, uh, it give you a great time saving. Uh, also save the con uh, construction site manpower because Singapore no manpower result in easily use uh, overseas uh, construction worker. And most important is a kind of green building technique because uh, less noise, less pollution from the con construction site. So I, I take out some uh, design to explain from, from this uh, PPDC. You can see top, less a uh, single wall from the other unit. Uh, this uh, another single wall from from the uh, inner unit, right? So each wall is a uh, 90 mm, and this uh, 20 mm is a uh, spacing for later grouping. So in this grouping process, make the sandwich structure be, become a unit one, right? So how is the bonding after apply the grouping? Is very important. Right, make sure the whole structure integrate together. We also uh, have the local authority and the construction site to set up this uh, uh, simple measurement procedure, uh, especially on some uh, critical point to collect the real time image. And typically, this uh, a good image from the solid location. We also do some chlorine sample. So you can see a total reflection only happen at 200 millimeter. That means the sandwich structure it become a one structure and in between there's no reflection. But how is the debonding happen? So you can see a reflection at 10 cm, so which is a grouping area. So you can use this method easily control your uh, this uh, grouping uh, process quality. So this uh, previous design, right? We just explained. Uh, for Singapore, we have a very limited land resource, so the building go higher, higher. So this is the latest PT PTVC structure design, uh, uh, especially for very high risk building. So you can see the wall make a, a 10 cm, and center spacing also 10 cm. Uh, after that, it filled with uh, SS, SCC, self-compact concrete. So in this, we also conduct some tests. You, you can see this uh, final product. Uh, the total reflection happened at the 300. So there's no reflection in between. And we also possible to see, uh, so it's an area for grouping. It also possible to see the, the key bar, right? The locking bar position. So there's some uh, latest information from uh, PD8000, uh, latest new feature can provide you more details when you conduct this kind of possible method. So next two topic will cover for tunnel inspection. Uh, later on, we will cover some uh, details on post tensioning inspection. Uh, before that, I pass uh, my Mac to David. I just give a short introduction about the Singapore CTE tunnel. We also involved for some uh, testing. Just uh, give a quick overlook. We conduct both GPR tests and PDA thousand tests. So you can see we, we measure on the surface. So GPR, we can have a very clear structural details. All the rebar is displayed uh, uh, in a certain depth, but we can't see the total thickness. The same location, we do the pulse echo, we can see the rebar. We also can see the, the concrete uh, thickness, which is at uh, 1.1 meter. So it, our coding design is uh, very accurate. Okay, so we're gonna look first at the tunnel inspection. It's one of the few applications where there's actually a national guideline world, you know, worldwide for pulse echo testing, uh, which is actually in Germany. Uh, this one Augustine just did. This is actually uh, the typical tunnel construction that you have in uh, that it's used in Germany. Basically, you have a double uh, shell, and then you have a waterproof uh, membrane between the shells. And the problem that can happen if you get voids like the one, just, I'll just turn the laser pointer on. 
Um, if you get voids like this, what can happen is that water seeping through the rock, it builds up pressure on this membrane and uh, basically, okay, one thing, it starts corroding the rebars inside, but it then can break through and you get uh, water spillage into the tunnel. So this is something that has to be avoided. It's something, it's a com in Germany, it's actually a compulsory test on all traffic tunnels. So it has to be done at the time of construction. Yeah, this is the test method that's uh, used for it. Basically, they recommend testing at um, 80 centimetres. If you can imagine a clock face, you test from about um, 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock at 80 centimetres spacing. And, um, you know, this is what we do here. We don't have to use 80 centimetres to be able to see everything easily on the screen. We recommend something like 5 centimetres, so you see each one uh, spaced. And when we can detect the thickness, we can use automatic tagging function on this uh, to detect the back wall. So we can very easily measure the thickness of the structure. Here, these blue dots here, they show you the typical pattern. So like I said, from 10 to 2 o'clock. And then also you have to measure along uh, the apex of the tunnel because these are like the critical areas where this type of uh, defect can take place. And it's done at the construction phase, actually, so they can actually uh, refill these. If they discover voids, they can refill them before there's any, any damage done. The way we do this now, we actually, uh, and I've actually posted a LinkedIn video on this. We actually uh, export this tag information and we can import it into Excel. And then you can set up a, a grid like this using uh, conditional formatting to highlight uh, voided areas. This question here, direct area mapping mode measurement is useful. I mean, definitely it is. I can also say it's something that's in our planning to uh, include this into the PD 8000 uh, at some stage. I cannot uh, give a timeline for this now, but uh, it is something that's uh, planned to be integrated because we've actually developed this kind of software for another instrument for the... Um, metal testing area, so it's only a matter of time, I think, before this is uh, included directly in the PD-8000 uh, app. Um, Shotcrete, this is something that we can test, and um, especially fiber, steel fiber reinforced Shotcrete is used um, quite a lot in Europe. Um, you cannot test on Shotcrete, on steel fiber reinforced concrete, at all with uh, electro um, magnetic methods or GPR or any current like the Provermate instrument. They just don't work on steel fiber reinforced concrete because the signal gets um, scattered too much. There was a major study done on this at one of the universities in Switzerland. Uh, what you can use though is pulse echo technology because it's a physical, it's a mechanical uh, sound wave so it's unaffected by the steel fibers so i'm going to run this uh, sh uh, short video and you can see this application here we can see a shot creep machine in the hagerbach test gallery in switzerland a leading research center for tunnel construction practices fiber reinforced shot creep is being applied to the surface and some test pallets the finished surface follows the contours of the bedrock and is very uneven if we look in detail at the surface, you can see how rough it is. or very difficult to carry out non-destructive testing on such a surface. But as we can see here, it can be done quite simply. The ProSec Pundit Library Pro ultrasonic pulse echo instrument requires only access from a single side. And we can easily measure the back wall echoes that allow us to calculate the pulse velocity. In order to see what makes this possible, let's take a closer look. As you can see, each individual transducer element is sprung independently. This allows it to adapt itself to surface variations such as those produced by shotcrete. In addition to this, its compact size, 21 centimeters wide, means it is also able to cope with the contours of the tunnel wall. A wide instrument would have difficulty here. So now let's look at what kind of results it produces. 
Here we can see pulse velocity measurements made in the test pallets at 7 days and 28 days. As you can see, there is a marked increase in the pulse velocity as the concrete cures. Having calibrated the pulse velocity, we can measure directly on the tunnel lining to estimate the thickness of the shotcrete layer. This information is very useful to contractors or inspectors who wish to determine the volume of concrete that has been applied to the tunnel wall. So in conclusion, ultrasonic pulse echo measurements made with Pondit Live Array Pro can track curing and estimate layer thickness of steel fiber reinforced shotcrete. Okay, so you can see we can test on steel fibre reinforced concrete. Uh, we've also done some studies, say at this university, when you have rebars inside as well, we can detect uh, depth of rebars and pipes inside steel fibre reinforced concrete. Um, moving on, this is actually another uh, tunnel test that was carried out, and you can see here GPR data. Um, the left hand side is basically uh, unreinforced uh, tunnel lining and on the right hand side here we can see rebars clearly with uh, the GPR. If we look at the pulse echo measurements here, you can see here we're carrying out this, is, uh, this recommended uh, test pattern on the apex, sort of the top of the side of the tunnel and you can clearly see here Back wall measurements, we can clearly detect the back wall. So thickness, uh, tunnel thickness, uh, again, it's a clear, uh, what should I say, it's a major application for this. And it's typically something where you only have access from one side. So it's an ideal application for pulse echo technology. Okay, these are the images superimposed onto the surface of the tunnel. Generally, uh, we've seen this all through and it's a clear message from us that uh, to test with more than one technology. So this is another example of combination of GPR and Pulse Echo technology. And it's for uh, inspecting tendon ducts. Basically we're looking at uh, the two instruments we have. So we have our GPR, so the step frequency continuous wave GPR and then the Pundit PD8000. Um, GPR, you can very quickly detect the locations of tendon ducts. You can detect uh, the location of tendon ducts with a pundit as well, but of course it's more time consuming. So this is a job that's uh, much better done by GPR. So if I start the scan, this is a typical scan here. So we scan quickly over the surface. You can see the upper line rebars, the lower line tendon ducts, and then you generally move back and mark the apex of the uh, parabola to identify the location of the tendon dog. So this, uh, we can mark them using our tagging system. Um, so this is something that's very easily done with GPR and very quickly. But you can't tell anything about the condition of the tendon dog with this. It's really only a location method. The certain properties of uh, pulse echo technology, uh, Augustine ran again through the theory before. We get very strong reflections from anything with um, air inside, in, inside the concrete. So generally, if uh, the tendon duct is fully grounded, we can get a, a weak echo. And where tendon ducts have an air gap inside, we get a very strong echo. And this allows you to get some information about the state of the tendon duct and uh, here you can see an example this is a line scan along uh, a tendon duct which is basically hot you can see actually over here this side of it is not grouted the far side of it is grouted we get very strong echoes from the non-grouted side and we get weaker echoes from the grouted section um, and we can take this further uh, since we developed the on-site 3D imaging. So again, I'll run a short video and you can see how that I'd looks. Like to introduce a brand new world of on-site 3D imaging. In order to generate 3D images, we use a new data collection mode called Stripe Scan. Here, we collect the data scanning perpendicular to the long axis of the transducer. 
The individual B scans will then be interpolated to generate the complete 3D imaging information. As you can see from the screenshot in the lower right hand side, the time slice view is being created in real time. Now let's look at the completed scan. The red rectangle shows the area covered. The time slice view allows us to investigate the object at varying depths. I've set the thickness of the slice to 5 centimeters here, and as we move the slice down, we see the first object appear at around 8 centimeters. You can very clearly see the yellow plastic duct. As I continue to move the slice deeper into the block, the next thing we see are very strong reflections from the non grouted section of the tendon duct. I only see the grouted section as I move the slice deeper still. The end view of the test block shows the relative depths of the various objects. We see the first back wall echo at a depth of 30 centimeters with a shadowing effect from the tendon duct. And as we move the slice deeper still, we see the next back wall echo at a depth of 50 centimeters. Now let's look at this another way. A complete 3D visualization of the object, which we can manipulate and view as we wish. Such images have never before been available on site. Okay, so there you can see again how 3D imaging can give us uh, even more clarity. Um, this is actually a test on site. This is in, in London, actually. Uh, and it's a flyover that one of our uh, customers in the UK, who I would say they've actually made quite a, a business case out of this technique now. Uh, they're called Henderson Thomas Associates. Um, They've really took this and marketed it and they get a lot of business in the UK looking for this kind of uh, defect. I should point out, they used to, they were used to do this, looking for this kind of defects anyway, but they use traditional methods in the past, like simply just uh, more or less coring at random. Um, so basically you can see they mark out the path of the tendon duct using the GPR. And um, then, you can scan, scan along the, uh, the line of the, the tendon duct using the pulse echo uh, detection. Um, you can see here some uh, real results, and this was actually, uh, we used this as a text example when we were first de developing uh, the stuff. We were looking to be able to go on site with these guys. So we could uh, scan over an area where the, we knew there was a void. You can see they've actually broken into the concrete there sorry, this section here, and you can see there's actually a big air void inside the tendon duct where it hasn't been filled with grouting. And there's another side where it's uh, fully grouted. And you can see the big difference in the, uh, the reflections. So here, where, where there's a void inside the, the tendon duct, we get a very strong echo. This is typically what you get on a healthy duct. You actually get a reflection from the, the top side of the um, tendon duct. And also, quite often, then you get a reflection from the back side of the tendon duct. And this is another clear indication that you've actually got healthy grouting in place. But what they use mostly is actually this difference in the amplitude from the top side of the duct. That's what they use to identify places. And generally, they go ahead. Once they've identified this, they will actually, if they think there's a really uh, evidence of, of voidage, they will go make a call at one of the locations identified to uh, confirm this. And um, the big saving for them is they're not just doing random coring anymore. They actually know exactly where they have to take the cores to, to prove uh, the findings that they've uh, found by non-destructive testing. Um, this is again, uh, C scan, so a time slice view. Uh, this was actually done again, it was from the early stage before we fully integrated this into the app. And you can see here 
the time slices from an area with a void inside, and this is on a healthy duct. So huge difference in the uh, amplitude of the pulse echo signal. Um, some, and like I said, generally they always uh, verify the findings by doing destructive testing also. If it's allowed, sometimes destructive testing is not allowed. But you can see here, this is an area where they have clear evidence of voiding and here not so much. And then they can follow this up, do the cause, and then you really see voids inside the structure. So it allows them to actually uh, save a lot of time and effort on the uh, what I would say necessary destructive testing. A lot of, um, yeah, what should I say? Most, most clients won't rely on NDT only. It's generally a combination of the two, but you can save a lot of time and effort by using NDT. Um, this one, is a similar application. This is a, an application, it's one that I, I wasn't familiar with. You can see this is in uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, but it's an application I've seen also done in, uh, in the Middle East also, basically where they're looking at grouting voids uh, on, on the beams. And then again, if it's not fully grouted, you get these very strong echoes where it is grouted, uh, you don't have such strong echoes, and I can blend in the line of the uh, the duct so you can see it more clearly. So again, we can detect very clearly where grouting errors. Again, pulse echo. It's very good for detecting defects inside concrete which have air, because from air we get more or less 100% reflection. So any kinds of defects that have air inside, that's what you can detect with uh, pulse echo technology. Um, so basically, this is the message that we have. Um, you combine GPR and pulse echo for um, basically you detect objects with the GPR. You check on the state of the objects, defects with pulse echo tomography. And I think, is that the end, uh, Augustine? Yes. So David, there's a question talking about surface width. Uh, why does it exist for surface width? Any matter can um, help, yeah. I mean, with what we have inside the, uh, inside the instrument is, uh, of course, surface width cancellation. So I mean, if you, that's the first thing to do, just uh, apply the surface width cancellation and then remove the surface waves. So this should actually uh, detect it. If you have, you know, uh, we sometimes get this question about testing on tiled surfaces, things like this, you know, where you have a very thin covering. But if this is not bonded to the surface and there's like an air gap, then it really, um, what should I say? It blocks the signal. The entire signal is reflected and we cannot see deeper than this. So. Uh, Surface waves, um, the surface waves do just that. They travel along the surface from one transducer to the next, and they always arrive first. That's why we have the, the, the function in, inside the uh, application to remove surface waves. There's a frequency we apply. Uh, frequency, since we... Um, Launched the PD8000, we actually introduced uh, the possibility to use different frequencies. Our um, standard frequency, we have this new function, you can see there it's called macro. Um, basically, there are three settings. Intermediate field, which is the standard setting that we had in previous versions of the Pundit, so the Pundit Library of Pro. Uh, and we have two new um, settings which are far field and near field. The near field is basically a high frequency setting, so it uses a, it uses um, around about 60, 65 uh, kilohertz, and we also reduce the transmission voltage. And uh, it's it's basically used for looking at near field objects. 
And this, with this one, we can get the best resolution on the rebar structure, actually. The, the images that um, Augustine showed you where we can even see, you know, rebar is very close together. So closer together than actually even uh, high resolution GPRs can see, we can, we can, we can detect rebars closer together with the pundit than, than that, um, using this, this high frequency mode. The far field setting that's highlighted there, that's actually a, a low frequency and a higher transmission voltage. And, it, uh, and you can see the transmission time has been uh, extended to 2000 microseconds. Uh, with this, we can see objects much deeper in the concrete. So we have three settings now, which is basically changing the frequency. They change the transmission voltage and they change the maximum transmission time, depending on uh, whereabouts in the concrete you want to investigate. Okay. Yes. So there's a new question talking about the accuracy of the instrument, which is we actually explained since the last webinar. Maybe you can give some short input on it. I mean, if you're talking about accuracy, uh, we're talking about depth accuracy, I guess. Uh, um, the accuracy of the instruments defined by how accurately you can calibrate the pulse velocity. So if you have, um, and this, yeah, there's this uh, further function which is called signal zero offset. Um, basically, the signal zero offset in the past, you had to uh, do this manually. Since we launched the PD8000, uh, this is done um, automatically in the, in the software. You need to have a second echo though. It, it operates on using two echoes. And it uses the difference between the first and second echo to calibrate the pulse velocity. And then it uses, um, once this pulse velocity is set, it uses this information together with the actual depth of the object to, uh, to calibrate the pulse velocity. This is the most accurate you can get. Um, there's been some research done in Germany, some studies on, on uh, absolute accuracy. Um, it's not as accurate, for example, as something like a, a cover meter. Uh, 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 any current cover meters, if you're talking about rebar cover, they're by far still more accurate than any other technology. The more accurate than GPR, the more accurate than Pulse Echo. But uh, there are some cases, for example, like fiber reinforced concrete where GPR doesn't work, eddy current doesn't work. You can still measure the cover with uh, ultrasonic pulse echo. And this is actually being added into the, um, the German concrete societies, uh, not the German, the German non-destructive testing society, their uh, guideline on, on cover measurement now. So um, you can, um, you can, I say you need to have a note to be able to get very accurate measurements. You need to have at least one section in the concrete structure where you have um, multiple echoes and a known depth. Till now, um, like the European standard for pulse velocity determination, it's EN 12504 4. This has actually been revised now because now we have the technology to measure pulse velocity also with shear waves. Until now, it's only been uh, using P waves or compressional waves. Um, basically, because the technology wasn't there in the past, but it's been recognized now that you can measure pulse velocity. You can measure shear wave pulse velocity and you can correlate shear wave pulse velocities in exactly the same way you can P waves. And um, this standard's been revised and I expect it to come out later this year. And it'll be the first time really that Pulse Echo technology is actually in uh, one of the major standards as a recognized technique. So uh, it takes the standards normally a bit of time to catch up with the, with the technology, but now it's uh, moving, yeah? Okay.